Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 145 I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your word to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendour of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name for ever and ever. The first lesson is from the 13th chapter of the book of Genesis, starting at the second verse. Now Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold, and he journeyed on by stages from Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai to the place where he had made an altar at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them living together, for their possessions were so great that they could not live together. And there was strife between the herders of Abram's livestock and the herders of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the parasites lived in the land. Then Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herders and my herders, for we are kindred. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot looked about him and saw that the plain of the Jordan was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord, like the garden of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. 
This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the plain of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the plain and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated from him, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are northwards and southwards and eastwards and westwards, for all the land that you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Rise up. Walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. Here endeth the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the 26th chapter of the book of Matthew, starting at the 17th verse. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives, Jesus said to them, 
you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But before I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Here endeth the second lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who sent your Apostle Paul to preach the Gospel and gave him Timothy and Titus to be his companions in faith, grant that our fellowship in the Holy Spirit may be a witness to the name of Jesus, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bring our intercessions before our Heavenly Father, trusting that he hears us. 
bless the worldwide church and please bless our churches st george colgate and st george tombland and our online community travel with us lord and guide us as we seek to connect meaningfully with our brothers and sisters in these communities and beyond we want to spread your love and we need your help and guidance Grant wisdom, courage and strength to Bishop Graham in his role. Grant wisdom, courage and strength to Alaric and all of us in our roles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. The world is so big and yet we can now be in our homes praying for it, knowing that you hear us. We pray for people of the world, for people of all faiths and people of no faith, all our brothers and sisters. Help us to live respectfully of all living things and to tread lightly. Help us not to be overwhelmed by the magnitude of the world's suffering. And also help us not to be underwhelmed by how small a part we may play in making it better. We can play our part by being your light in our small corner. You in your small corner and I in mine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all who are sick or sad in any way, in hospital or at home, with physical illness or emotional illness, mental or spiritual illness, with addiction, loneliness, grief, loss, Lord, you know. Please make your comfort and presence known, especially where it's most needed. And we pray in the silence, for those who are on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, today we have heard new terrible figures of the number of COVID deaths in Britain alone. We are heavy hearted as we think that each number is a real life, a real person, a precious soul. May they and all the deceased rest in peace and rise in glory. We remember the bereaved and bring them to your loving embrace for your comfort. Please comfort and reassure, reassure them that even in the darkest times, there is light in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we reflect on the day that is passing, we thank you for the good things we have, for food, water, homes, birds singing outside, for life, for phone calls, for things which have made us laugh or smile, for books, music, radio, television, for technology and for this blessed time that we can have together. May we see your blessings and find them in unexpected times and places. And Father, help us to remember the Lord is near to all who call to all who call on him in truth. Lord, we call on you. Please be near us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and who dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. 
fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.